We've looked at using some pretty simple chord progressions based on strong or weak harmonic movement and ways to make them work, but how can we make these simple chord progressions a little bit more interesting? How can we add color to them without changing their fundamental simplicity? Because that is often the quality you want in a song, but you don't want it to be boring. How can we attract the listener's attention and make it a little more interesting and add variety? Well, there's several ways of adding color to these basically simple chord progressions. One of the ways is to use a pedal tone. And in this first example, you'll notice that I'm in C and I'm using the familiar 1 and then 4, 5, 1, 4, 5. But it's all over a C pedal. And it really gives a different quality to the 4 and 5 chords, but especially the 5 chord. The G over C, it sort of sounds like a C major 7, but it does have that dominant function leading you back to 1. So it really gives a different variety. And it also is a nice opportunity to use some different inversions when you're using a repeating pattern like this. Now, you'll notice throughout this example, and I played it a few times through because I varied the inversions here as I got more into the pattern, and you'll see that raising the range and using different inversions is another way to add variety to these chord patterns. So you'll see that the G over C is a very interesting color because it's kind of like a C major 7 but with no third. And yet, like I say, it does have that dominant function. Let's look at the next example. And here's a way of adding variety by displacing where the chords start. So this is the same chord progression, 1, 4, 5 in the key of C with the same C pedal. But instead of starting on the 1 chord, I'm starting on the 4 chord. So I'm going F for a bar and then 5, 1, 4, and then 5, 1. So listen how different this sounds with the same pedal, same key, same harmonic movement, but just with the chords placed differently. So we've looked at using pedal tones, using different inversions, and starting on a different chord other than one to make the tonality a bit ambiguous. Let's look at the next example, and here I'm using a different pedal note. So this is again one four five one, one four five one, but I'm using a dominant pedal, and that changes the feeling. And keep your ears open, I have a little surprise at the end. You'll see how some harmonic movement over that pedal note, some diatonic harmonic movement can add some nice color. So there we have a dominant pedal, again, changing the mood and feel of that basic 1-4-5 pattern. And here I'm changing up the harmonic rhythm. I'm going 5 for a whole bar, 1 for a whole bar, just to turn it around a bit and mix it up. And then here I used a 3 chord and a 2 chord over that dominant pedal just to get some movement to lead us back to 1 instead of just going 4-5-1. So nice ways of adding variety. Another standard device used in this type of song construction is if you have simple patterns like this, you'll repeat it and then the last time maybe vary it slightly. Even though our main signposts are the same, the one chord, we have different ways of getting there. So a nice way of adding a little variety. Let's look at the next example here. And this is a different type of pedal. I'm using a minor key right now. I'm in C minor. And I'm going to use some triads all over that C bass to create some tension. So we have D flat over C, which is a very dissonant kind of chord, but it leads to a nice tension and then resolution. So let's listen to this. So we're going one and then in this tension bar, it's kind of like tonic, dominant, tonic, dominant. I'm hovering around the one chord and then a dominant function with some tension. So it's home, tension, home, tension, etc. I'm varying it a bit. I'm going one for a whole bar here and then one to four over here and then one to the flat six, which is a related chord because C minor and A flat both have C and E flat in common. 
so they're very close harmonically, but it gives a little movement instead of having C minor for the whole bar. One note changes just to add a bit of movement to it. So another way of using pedals. Let's look at the next example here. And in this example, another way of adding variety to these chord progressions is to use a bass note. So again, I'm using my standard 1-4-5 here, but what I'm doing is I'm going one over the third in the bass. And this gives a nice movement. So I can go C and then E in the bass to F to G. And in this example, I'm not using a pedal. I'm using a regular bass part, but I'm using this movement with the bass note. So it's a way of adding a bit of a different color to having one for the whole bar. So one and then one with three in the bass, which suggests movement, although it's really still the same chord. So it adds variety, but doesn't change the demands of the melody on top. I just went one five one at the end here. So that E in the bass really gives a nice sense of movement, even though nothing is really changing harmonically in the basic harmonic structure. Let's go on to the next example. And here, what I'm going to do is use rhythmic variety in the chord movement to displace the chords. So I'm using one, four, and five chords, nothing that we haven't seen yet. But instead of changing them two beats to a bar, I'm placing the changes on specific syncopated beats. So I'm using the four chord right on beat four and then the five chord on the last eighth note. So it's really a different feeling. Even though it's the same chords, it's a different way of using them that generates different movement by placing them on specific beats or syncopations rather than the standard one or two chords to a bar. Let's listen. And I use that example with the pedal in the bass, but it could easily work with a regular bass line and outlining that F to C and then G to C here would really draw attention to that harmonic movement. It's a little more subtle with the pedal tone. Now let's go to the next example. And what I want to show you here is the Bon Jovi song, Living on a Prayer, because this song uses a lot of these devices, pedals with different triads on top, creating tension and then release. And you'll notice that the verses start off with four bars of E minor, which is very weak movement. It's not even weak movement. It's no movement. But to add variety, of course, the melody and the lyric carry it, and that's very strong. But to add variety harmonically, they change the voicing here, and they put an F sharp in, which is the ninth of the E minor. So it suggests some movement, although the basic underlying harmony is staying the same. So it's a nice way of adding some color. And all this is under an E pedal, and then we get some triads here. And you'll see the pre-chorus, which is the section before the chorus, adds some nice harmonic solid movement that leads up to a solid chorus harmonically. So all this is E minor. And now triads. All over that E bass. Second verse. pre-chorus coming up. Building the excitement. And the big punches, we come up to the chorus, the climax. So you can see how well-crafted this song is. The verse hovers around E minor with some movement with triads over that bass note to add a bit of movement, but it's basically E minor. We have the pre-chorus, which leads up with some excitement to the chorus, which is in G, but it starts on the sixth chord, which is kind of deceptive. And the sixth chord is a nice replacement for the one chord because E minor and G have two notes in common, the G and the B. So it's kind of like going one, four, five, one, four, and then five with a sus. But to add variety, they used six instead. So really nice little subtle nuance that adds color and character to the song. And another nice touch is adding that sus over here the second time we hear the dominant chord. Just gives it a different flavor. 
and then back to the six. So very interestingly crafted harmonic movement. So there you go. We're going to look at some more chord progressions in the next video.